So, Angela, we've talked about how a high-functioning child uh, who is neurodiverse can cope with primary school. Yes. What happens when they move to secondary school? Well, when they move to secondary school, they still need a lot of support of the type that I've described. Um, so they need, you know, targets and structures and positive language and clarity, the five C's, calmness, consistency, etc. Um, and secondary school is a challenge for any child. Mm -hmm. It's a complete culture shock for many children because at primary school, you've got one teacher mostly, mm -hmm. and mostly you're in the same room. Um, and there's not so much moving about. And also in secondary school now, although there's uh, a lot of secondary schools now and schools in general are saying no mobile phones, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there is bullying that takes place. There's name calling, yes. um, there's unkindness. And in primary school, this can be managed better Mm -hmm. uh, but in secondary school, it's hard to manage. Yes. You know, there's jostling in corridors. There's noise in corridors. There are buzzers and bells. Yes. Um, and this is very, very difficult for neurodiverse people, particularly mm -hmm. those um, on the autistic spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so secondary schools really need to be aware of this and they need to provide special support for children who have got that diagnosis, mm -hmm. especially in the first couple of years. And they really do need a lot of support because so many uh, placements break down for children um, on the autistic spectrum at secondary school. Mm -hmm. You get school phobia, they don't want to go to school, their anxiety is high, um, they then get depressed because they've you know, so many human needs are not being met. They don't feel secure. They don't feel they've got autonomy and control. They lose their sense of belonging. Yeah. They lose their sense of confidence and competence. All those things are just lost with that high level of anxiety caused in secondary schools. And really, the level of awareness for supporting children, neurodiverse children needs to be raised to a much higher level. And there needs to be home school working. Yes. There needs to be a link person who is whose sole job really is to um, be available to talk to and mm. support parents and for the children to know that their parents are being supported and mm. that school and home are talking together. Because... Um, one of the things that people on the autistic spectrum try to do is to control. They do it because they're so anxious. They try their best to control. And mm. often it's a type of control that doesn't work. Mm. Um, and they are not aware of that. And I say that how they think about it is, you know, bottles that you keep, the boxes that you keep bottles in have got compartments. Mm -hmm. So they sort of think, well, I can do this at home, but not there. Mm -hmm. Or I can not do that here and I can there. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that so-and-so and they don't know so-and-so. So they see that they can compartmentalize mm -hmm. their behaviors and their responses. What I've said um, to my staff in the school is we pull out that section that keeps all the bottles apart. We're all talking to each other. We're all communicating together. And that's at first is a bit of a shock, mm -hmm. but in the end, they feel supported by everybody knowing what's going on and not using judgmental language. No. Not, no. I heard that you were rude to mummy last night, yeah. none of that. So you so you, you chose to speak to mummy in a way that didn't work last night and she feels very sad about that. Mm. Um, so uh, that means that You've chosen, and I'll talk about choice in a minute, you've chosen not to have such and such that you really enjoy in school today. Yes. So we'll talk yes. about choice in a minute. But that is something that is that schools really need to take into account. And primary schools and secondary schools need to work together, and some of them do, um, but home and school in secondary school, and think about the environment mm. and support provide support for those children in mm. that environment and don't make them wrong and protect them from bullies. Yeah. 
Yeah. And stop them from being bullies yes. if they try it on. Well, your description has uh, brought to my attention, I really haven't thought about it before, but primary school is, is almost an extension of home. Yes. Whereas secondary school is right out into the big bad world. Absolutely. It's a really good way of looking at yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I hadn't quite appreciated that until you explained it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. So this whole thing, going back to choices that I mentioned before, is a, an extremely important part of training the brains of people who are neurodiverse, all human beings in fact, because mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff applies to all of yes, us, yes. but we need to you know, draw it out from the background, distinguish it and mm -hmm. really make it into something yeah. that is part of the structure, support structure. Yeah. So um, we'll talk about choices and um, how it relates to the brain. I don't know whether you've got anything you want to ask me about that. Well, I think really, Angela, you've talked about choice and the word choice is a very important one. Um, and I think uh, it would be helpful if you could enlarge upon it, please. Mm. Okay. Well, you, if we go back to making a, a brain with our hand, um, and I said everything goes through the emotional brain first, mm -hmm. um, and we all, are all the time making choices, all the time, the words that come out of my mouth, to you now and the words that come out mm -hmm. of your mouth to me yeah. are all made out of choice. You yeah. know, it's very fast moving, but it is a choice. Yeah. Um, and we're not always consciously aware. Um, am I going to choose to cut, to pick up this glass mm -hmm. and drink, have a sip of water mm -hmm. before I speak to you again? I'm choosing to do it. Mm. Now, in that process, I'm joining up I'm thinking in my emotional brain, is this a good idea to stop this conversation in this film and have a sip of water? Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm joining up with my rational brain. It is for the purpose of a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So I will do it. So you can see that my emotion and my reason have been working together over that simple action. Yes. Uh, but if, in fact, you're, uh, you have been coming slightly hoarse and you're having difficulty speaking, then the choice would have been very much just do that anyway because it's better to do it uh, yes. and be able to speak properly for the rest of the Yes, and that would also, my, you know, my voice is going funny. Mm. I would have an emotional response to that. Yes. Oh, dear, yes. my voice is not going to sound very good. I better yeah. have yeah. choose to yeah. have a drink of water. But this choice thing is the emotions and the reason working together. And when we make a choice, if we are sort of stuck in our emotions, mm -hmm. if I'm in a panic because my voice is going gruff and I'm really in a panic and I can't think straight and I don't make a choice to do anything, I'll stay there. Yes, yes. And I'll just, you know, oh, I can't speak anymore. Um, but by thinking, how can I solve this? Have a drink of water. I go up there. Mm -hmm. That's takes the activity out of my emotional brain and moves it into my rational brain yeah. and I become calmer. Taking action, effective action, always makes us calmer. Mm. And the power of choice is therefore a good thing for everybody, but children on the autistic spectrum don't know they have it uh -huh. unless they are taught it. Yes. And again, it's this matter of matching the situation to the word, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what do you choose? Do you choose, if you had a little spat with someone in the playground, because they've taken the ball away from you and you wanted to play with it, are you going to choose to get, run after them and hit them? Or are you going to choose to go and ask the adult in charge? Mm -hmm. to help you to sort this out. Mm -hmm. So we had signs everywhere in the school. If somebody upsets you, go and ask an adult for help. Yes. And we would say that as well. Don't forget, if you are upset, ask an adult for help. And so it's constant, this thing about consistent language. Yes. So if you chose, for example, I had... This was a, a common thing, something going on in the playground. So let's say two boys have had this thing. One boy's taken the ball away. The other boy has got really angry and run after 
the boy who's taken the ball and kicked them. Mm -hmm. So the, the adults in charge have brought the two boys in to have a conversation with me about it, not to be told off. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting there and I say, I hear that, Tom, you chose to kick Chris. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that right or not right? Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I did. So can you explain to me why you chose to do that? Well, I was playing with the ball and he just come along and took it mm. and ran off with it. I'm immediately noticing when you say that, that the expression you used of you choose to do that mm. immediately softens it. Yes. There's no judgment in it. No. Whereas if you said, you hit Thomas, then there's judgment. Yes. And, and whereas you say, I believe you, cho you, you chose to... Yes. And it automatically makes them think, gosh, I better think about that now a little bit. <laughs> yes. And also it is bringing up this thing of you... Oh, it's interesting that you chose that. Tell me about yes, it. Yes, yes, so, um, so I say, um, okay, did that... You chose to, to hit him or kick him or whatever it was. Oh, you chose to do that. Did it work for you or not work for yeah. you? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they say, whoa, yes, it did work. And I go, yeah. oh, so it's working for you to be in here in playtime talking to me, is it? Yes, correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> so did it work or not work? No, no, it didn't work, no. Well, that's really good thinking. Mm. Well done. Mm -hmm. That you can see that that didn't work. So um, I understand that you went along and, and you, took, you took the ball away when Tom was playing with it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And did that work for you or not? Well, yeah, it did work. I wanted the ball. So I said, yes, I understand that. So now you're in here talking to me about the choice you made and mm. not out in the playground. So you sure it worked for you? Well, no. <laughs> so that's really good that you can see that. Yes, yes. So what would have worked, Tom? Mm. Would, would, did kicking Chris work? Or is there a choice that you could have made that would have worked? Well, could have asked an adult for help. Good thinking. That's mm. really good thinking. And what about you, Chris? D didn't work for you. You said so. What could you have chosen to do? Well, I could have asked an adult to help me get a ball. Yeah. Yeah. That's good thinking, both of you. Well done. Now you just need to clear that up with each other and then it's finished. Mm -hmm. So... They'd sort of say, sorry, sorry. And you'd say, that's really, really good. Now it's finished, so we're not going to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Now they might do it again next playtime, but you just do the same thing mm. over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And to reinforce that choosing, um, we would have the good choosing medal. Oh, yes. And that would be given out on a Monday Every time somebody chose, like somebody chose to ask an adult for help in mm -hmm. the playground or chose to help somebody or do a good piece of work or mm. whatever they chose to do, they would get the Good Choosing Medal. And I would say, so and has got the Good Choosing Medal for doing really hard work on Monday when they didn't really feel like it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody would go and they get the medal. Yeah, and, and that brings it back to teamwork again, because for you to be able to judge who the good choice is or chooser was, <laughs> I needed you the need staff. to get the feedback from the staff. Yes. So they all need to be on the same wavelength. Yes. And uh, abil ability to understand what's going on and feed that back to you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a whiteboard in the classroom for the good choosing medal. Oh, yes. R yes. Recommendations. I don't know whether they do anything like that these days. I mean, when I was at school, we had conduct marks. <laughs> uh, and they were marked up on a board. And if you got four of them, you got actually physical punishment uh, in, in a week. But it, it, we always were very aware of that. It was con we were conscious of that. And yes. It, it did make you behave better than it would, you might otherwise have done. Yes, but it probably raised your anxiety. It probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, yes. Very good. No, that, that's uh, yes, so interesting. Yes, so... Choice is knowing you have a choice and teach being taught to make choices and think about choices is rewiring your brain yes. to think about will this work 
or not work. Yes. Yeah. And to think about consequences and the context within which those boys, the imaginary boys I told you about, were asked about the choices they made, yeah. um, that context could be transferred into many other situations in life. And then they had, had practice yes. about thinking about, in the first place, what are they going to choose? And after perhaps they've chosen something that didn't work, taking responsibility for it yes. without fear. Yes. Because yes. so often we blame others yeah. and don't look at ourselves yeah. simply out of fear yeah. that we're going to be judged adversely. Yeah. And when you start able being able to take responsibility for yourself and your actions, yes. That is mature behavior yep. and it is empowering and it gives you autonomy and control mm -hmm. that works for you in life. Absolutely. And, and not just as an individual, but I can think of political situations that would not have occurred if, in fact, that power of choice had been properly exercised. Yes. No names, no pact rule. Yes. Thank you very much, Angela. It can sometimes be difficult to clear up an incident um, mm. without knowing... Um, how these things come about. Is there any help that one can get? Uh, anything that you can read or see or? Um, well, there's an article um, which I can supply a link for um, in the Human Givens Journal. Human Givens, I'm trained in Human Givens Psychotherapy. And um, they were very interested in the school mm -hmm. and how it worked because we were, we'd set up the structure so that children's um, human emotional needs will be met. They came along and did some filming. Yes. And I wrote an article for their journal uh, about the power of choice. So um, that link, uh, we can provide that link, I think. Okay, good. Mm.